Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook, along with Darren Newsom, Senior Market Analyst for Bar Chart. We are seeing mostly lower prices here as we go through the early portion of this session, with the exception of the wheat market. And, you know, Darren, post WASD now, this market, as far as corn and soybeans, really focused in on what we're going to get off the combine, right? Yeah, that that to me is is the key here. We haven't done much of anything this week. We've got futures under a little bit of pressure. Uh, we've seen future spreads hold steady for the most part, and basis has been weakening in both corn and soybeans. So, you know, it's just it just seems like everybody's gearing up for harvest to see what actually starts coming in off the combines. And you know, I, short term, you know, merchandisers are expecting some bushels to be sold. Uh, we can see that again in what's going on in the basis markets and demand remains demand remains slow right now. Uh, you know, we are in that time frame, particularly in soybeans, where we do tend to see uh, a, you know export business pick up. But, you know, it, it has to happen. I mean, if it doesn't happen here over the next six months, U.S. is probably looking at quite a you know, we're, we're looking in a far more bearish situation once we get past February. So how much harvest pressure do you anticipate we're going to see? Have we put in a pre-harvest low now or are we yet to find that? I don't think we found it yet. Um, you know, if I look at the if I look at the cash charts, uh, again, one of them that I've talked about for quite some time, even though I don't believe in analogous years, the, the cash corn index is following relatively closely a very similar pattern to what it did between 2010 and 14 here so far between 2020 and 20 and so far in 2023. So if that's the case in 2014, the, mar the cash market didn't bottom out until July. We didn't post a low monthly close until July. So, you know, that tells us that there's time and space possibly for cash corn to continue to move lower. Why would this be? Well, again, we've got bushels coming in. We knew we had more acres planted again at the end of February. We knew uh, corn acres were going to go up. Uh, and so now, you know, if, if, if we still don't have demand, if we don't have a lot of feed demand, if ethanol demand is in question and we can't get exports rolling uh, here over the next few months, uh, then I, I just think there's going to be continued pressure. Uh, so I, it just looks like it's flattening out here. Uh, it's looking for a reason to move lower. And if we if we take out if the December contract takes out its contract low of uh, 473 and a half, then I, I think it opens the I think it opens the downside. Yeah, I was just going to ask you about that 473 and a mm -hmm. half low because we went down, tested it uh, report day and we held. But you don't think it's going to hold. No. And, you know, it's an interesting technical pattern. We've got a flat bottom around there at 473 and a half and we've got descending tops. Now, I know, you know, technical analysts will argue that, you know, it's a bullish wedge. Some will say it's a bearish wedge. You know, to me, it, it's kind of, you know, we're, we're just chewing through those buy orders as uh, sell orders continue to accumulate on top of this market. And eventually, you know, you run out of buy orders there at the lows. And so you and so you break it down and. You know, if we look at what the range was between the 507 and a half and 473 and a half, we've got 34 cents, you know, from a technical point of view that if we break, uh, you know, if we break that support, then, you know, we from, a, you know, again, a technician would say we've got 34 cents quickly to come off this market. Yeah, I know 450 has been pretty long term support area, too. So we'll see if that would hold as well. Um, what do you think about yield? Obviously, there's a lot of farmers that felt like, you know, yield came down Tuesday in the WASD, but that it needs to come down more. Do you think that's that's the case? I don't think it matters. Help. Heck, I'll say, OK, let, you know, let's make everyone happy. I'll, I'll, I'll say you know, national average yield is 120 bushels per acre. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, what, what matters is how the market views it. And right now we've seen the DSMARTS future spread hold pretty steady at about that you know, 14 cent carry level covering about 44, 45% uh, full, full carry. You know, if we were really concerned about yield, I think we would see some commercial buying coming into these spreads. Uh, we would see merchandisers pushing uh, to try to get some coverage for deferred spreads and, and, and later on in the marketing year. And we're just not seeing it. Uh, so I, again, it, it, yield doesn't matter. Overall production numbers doesn't matter. What what does matter is the is the supply and demand situation as a whole. And we don't get those numbers from USDA. I mean, I, we do. But what we get from USDA is just imaginary. So, I mean, if we look at what the market's telling us, they're not overly concerned with what national average yield is or acres or this sort of thing. They're looking at the big picture. How does supply relate to demand? And right now, demand, uh, we have some work to do, don't we? 
Yeah, we really do. Um, you know, as we came out of the 2022-23 marketing year, it, it wasn't going all that well. Uh, exports came up way short of last year. We knew they would. Uh, now, as we head off into the new year, there's not a lot of sales on the books. And in corn, you know, we still haven't seen a, much of a rebuild on the cattle herd. So feed demand still in question. And ethanol demand. I mean, are, are we going if, if uh, you know, gasoline continues to go up uh, following uh, crude oil and, and distillates, you know, what, what's going to happen with ethanol demand over the next, uh, you know, three to six months as well. So, I mean, it's a pretty tricky picture right now for corn demand uh, domestically and, uh, and in exports. What about soybean demand, though, Darren? Do you think that it is good enough right now to keep us above $13 or or do we stay above that level at least till we start seeing if South America is going to get planted and then we kind of wipe this thing out? I think if we're going to wipe it out, it's probably going to be before uh, South America gets completely planted. I mean, again, from a purely technical point of view, it looks like November beans should take out the, the tw- I think it was a 1282 low or something like that uh, from a number of weeks ago. So that would certainly be the target. Uh, and, and then we'll see, you know, what gets planted, what the early conditions are, you know, as far as, uh, you know, weather conditions are down in, the, in South America, particularly Brazil. You know, the, the, the key here, the kind of the wild card, was domestic crush. I mean, we were going to need to continue to see a uh, solid domestic crush taking the place, uh, you know, in the soybean meal market of, of Argentina. And now all of a sudden, Argentina is looking at putting its next crop in, and we really haven't seen a huge uptick uh, in exports for soybean meal. It's still solid, but it's not uh, making up all the difference for what we're losing in soybeans. And then on the other side, you know, the we, the U.S. crush demand was supposed to pick up for, you know, domestic soybean oil use. And Again, maybe it happens. Maybe it happens this next year. Maybe it's the next year down the road. But, you know, that's really going to have to be what saves the U.S. soybean industry at this point uh, is we're going to have to get this this increased crush demand going. What about the wheat market? We're up a little bit today. Is that all technical in nature? And do you think we have a chance at bottoming this market or did we on Tuesday with those reversals that we saw off the contract lows? I don't, you know, the, really the only thing that I've seen in the wheat market, particularly in the Chicago wheat market, is some non-commercial short covering. That group's still holding a, a you know, a relatively large uh, short futures position in Chicago. Uh, fundamentally, that market's a train wreck. We've got basis at more, you know, almost 88 cents under December futures. We've got the DSMARTS future spread covering 100% uh, full carry. We've got, you know, the CME's VSR, uh, the higher maximum storage rate going to go into effect next week. Uh, it's going to, you know, it's going to move from five cents per bushel per month to eight cents per bushel per month. There is absolutely nothing about that uh, that is bullish, uh, you know, fundamentally. So to me, it looks like, you know, we bounced it off 470 on the weekly chart. This is going to look like a typical uh, wheat head fake if somehow Chicago wheat closes higher. Uh, But, you know, I really don't see any reason to get overly excited about, you know, the bullish side of wheat at this point. Well, and it looks like we've got some better planting conditions for HRW areas Mm -hmm. too. So that may be part of it. Uh, let's talk about cattle all-time highs yesterday and live and feeder cattle futures. That thing has just been methodically um, correcting and then moving back into those highs. Do you think, do you see anything that could stop this rally because the supply is so, so tight? I, I really don't. And, and it's interesting you mentioned the supplies because if we look at the future spreads, they're not overly bullish. And so this would tell us that there st- seems to be plenty of supplies, even though, again, we, again we're not seeing the numbers uh, when they're actually released. But, you know, this this continues to be an incredibly strong rally. Every, as you mentioned, every time it looks like it's getting ready to top it, you know, eventually moves to a new high within the next couple of days, next couple of weeks. And it just comes back to something I always say, you know, a market that can't go down, won't go down. We might not know why. Uh, but we can certainly see that cattle don't want to go down right now and, and they just can't go down. So, again, I, I don't want to be the one selling this. I'm, I'm going to let it run. And if I've got some cash cattle to sell, I'll just sell it into the market. Uh, we could also be buying puts. But again, at, at some point, those start to add up as well. So, I mean, you've got a solid cash market. Last I heard was still in the 179, 180. We do need to keep a, close eye, a closer eye on boxed beef as you know, it's looking a little tired up at these levels as we move out of grilling season. So we'll see uh, if that starts to put any pressure on the market. But right now, I still don't want to be the first one selling. Yeah. And you mentioned the cash trade, and we actually had some 180 up to 187 yesterday yeah. in the North Darren. So I haven't seen much out of the South, but at least that Northern 
Uh, trade is really kind of pushing yeah. the market here or did yesterday. Hog market, we're going to skip that for this morning, but let's talk about <laughs> Crude oil, because we got above $90, we're back below it this morning. But, you know, is this a chart breakout that we've had here recently? And where do you project us to go from there? You know, if we, if we look at the long term monthly charts, we've seen some bullish breakouts in both. You know, we've got obviously gotten gasoline, but we've also had it in crude oil and, and diesel fuel, which is also jet fuel and so on. Uh, they've gone to new four month highs. And I can't remember if it was late July or early August when that actually happened. But it did confirm that both markets or the majority of the, uh, the energy sector has moved into long term uptrends now. Let's see how long it lasts. Again, fundamentally, if we look at the spreads, they're all in backwardation. They're all inverted. Uh, so, you know, we, we know we have bullish supply and demand heading into fall and winter. Uh, we know supplies are still tight in relation to demand. And now it seems to be we're, we're drawing some investment money in as well. Uh, so it looks like we've got a pretty bullish structure across the board in the energy sector. And it's going to be hard to put a top in these things. Uh, we, we also know OPEC plus is not going to not going to you know, in, stop its uh, production cuts anytime soon. I think right now they're scheduled to last at least through December and then they'll probably extend them on some more off in 2024. So, you know, what will make this interesting is if the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve raises rates again here in September, but bumps it up another quarter point and the U.S. dollar continues to firm. Will this weigh on some of these commodity sectors? We've already seen it start to put some pressure on gold. Uh, we could argue that uh, some of the, the grain oil seam markets have also been struggling, but energies and livestock and these other markets really have just kind of shrugged it off to this point. Yeah, but we had that bearish CPI this week. And so that may tip the the hand of the feds. We'll see if that mm -hmm. happens next week. Thanks so much, Darren Newsom, joining us, senior market analyst with Bar Chart, and that's Markets Now.